Hey all you nerds, Gabe aka Fruby Art here and welcome back to our Gravity Falls and Cryptid inspired region. In the previous episode, you went to the local fair and rescued everybody from a rampaging ultra beast. Now, it's time to get some pancakes as a reward. I can't thank you enough. I hope you're nice and full. Top-notch scrub, sugar pants. I meant to ask, Lazy Susie, did you get attacked by that ultra beast at the fair? What's up with your eye? <laughs> no, I got hit by a bus, silly girl. But it doesn't stop me from being a cook. Well, that and I have a little help. From behind Lazy Susie waddles a helpful looking Pokemon. Time for another silly American cryptid. This is the Tea Kettler. The exact appearance is unknown, but it's often depicted as a small, short legged dog, usually a corgi, but we've already got a corgi Pokemon with Yamper, so we're gonna use something even weirder looking the unfortunate abomination that is the pug. Now the tea kettler, beyond looking like a little puppy, makes a whistling noise, uh, just like a teapot, and produces jets of steam. This lets us use the very rare fire and water dual type, and uh, use a nice jarring color palette, which is fun. I want this guy to really look kind of messed up, just like a pug, like pugs are adorable, but also they're kind of messed up. Um, I also imagine that it can use blasts of steam to launch itself around, so it's actually surprisingly fast, like poof, it just disappears and poof, it reappears. Um, it actually let me build a rivalry with foe line. So I'm treating this little puppy like uh, something from Dungeons and Dragons called a blink dog and blink dogs hate Displacer Beast, so that means they get to have a, it's whatever, we'll just go with it. Okay, let's go ahead and meet Tuff, the boiling Pokemon. This ugly little pooch's tummy is always extremely warm. It also stores large amounts of water in its rotund body that it is able to superheat at will. Though unassuming, Tuff are surprisingly good guard dogs and take pride guarding the Hoax region from outsiders. They have a bit of a rivalry with Foline. Its ability is White Smoke to, you know, reference all the steam, and that prevents other Pokemon from lowering its stats. That's pretty nice. And its hidden ability, it gets both Drought and Drizzle. Yeah, it's got some versatility. That's fun. And you have no doubt that it would be great having one of these little guys aiding you in the kitchen. It waddles back behind the counter to help with food prep. Well, we should probably head out. I don't like leaving the research shack unattended when it could be making money. And these goofs should be off tracking down some important tech. Somehow he explodes his experiments and sends them rocketing all over town and we're the ones who have to clean it up. What? Something rocketing across the sky? Well, I think I saw that happen. From what I could tell, it landed in the woods nearby. I thought about checking it out myself, but there is supposed to be a horrifyingly ugly beast stalking that area. Horrifyingly ugly? Oh yeah, dude. I've heard stories about it. My cousin Richie ran into it, and it was so ugly that he was completely paralyzed. And like, his hair fell out. And I think he died. Richie and I were just talking about it the other day. Well, let me mark it on your map in case you want to check it out. Well, I think that you kids want to check it out while I go back to the research shack. Moose, Cordy, make sure you visit the Pokemon Center before you head out and make sure the twins don't get eaten by whatever ugly monster is out there. You got it, Professor. All right, dorks, let's roll. You head out and walk over to a nearby kiosk building, which appears to be a combination Pokemart and Pokemon Center. It is manned by a very hip young man. Hey, yo, dogs! What up, what up, what up, and welcome! How can I be of assistance, huh? I can sell you some goodies or straight up heal your Pokemon to full health. You look familiar. Oh, was your face ever on a cereal box? At some point, most probably. 
Yeah, he used to be a part of a boy band, but when their bus broke down in Twin Falls, they used it as an excuse to pivot to working in Poke Centers. Yo, we just had to get out because the music business is straight up predatory towards its own talent. You feel me, Ham? Did you just call me Ham? Oh, and also they run the cab company too, so you can always get picked up and returned to a Poke Center, no matter where you are. They do a lot of odd jobs around here. Word. Plus, we get to work with some Pokemon unique to the Hoax region, which is lit as heck. A little Pokemon shuffles out. It's the same as Maples, but not shiny. The two Pokemon oink at each other happily. Now let me heal up your dang Pokemon already. The helpful ex-boy band member gets your Pokemon ready to explore the woods and even gifts you a free item for your first time visiting a Pokemon Center. This is the Flame Feather. It gives off quite a bit of heat just holding it, and if you have an unevolved idol, it pops up and seems transfixed by the feather. That's right, it's time for our third idol evolution. This one is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're looking at the Phoenix, but since idol isn't always the best at copying things, it doesn't get to be a fully formed flying firebird instead, that, you know, as the story goes, when a phoenix dies, it's reborn from its ashes. So we've got a pathetic little fire chick in some goopy ashes. Colors were, you know, easy to figure out since it's a fire type and it's got the ashes. But I was able to have some fun with the shiny. Um, you'll see, but it looks like bird poop. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, let's go ahead and meet the third idle evolution. This is Fitchix, the toasty bird Pokemon. Idle that are exposed to the flame feather item attempt to embody its fiery aura, but end up burning up completely upon evolution. Fitchix are surrounded by a mixture of ash and goo. Though relatively large, they prefer to act helpless and have others bring them food. Its ability is flame body, so that means when it's hit by a contact move, there's a chance it can burn the attacker. Um, it also makes eggs hatch faster, so that's nice. And the hidden ability is imposter. But you'll have to let me know if you would evolve your idle into this fiery bird, or if you want to hold off for the final idle option. You also have the opportunity to buy any other items or moves that you may want, um, and then you turn to the deep forest to the south. It's pretty confusing, but luckily you are able to follow the general coordinates Lazy Susie gave you, since the forest itself is littered with seemingly random, disorienting signs. On your travels, you run into a few familiar Pokemon like Stinkimp, Stitchum, and the very rare Squaro. But as you travel through, it seems that two of your Pokemon are actually ready to evolve. First up, is Tintus. Being our regional bug, it's gotten all the experience it needs to evolve, and at a nice low level. Now we are gonna get weird here. I knew that I wanted a cocoon form that looked a little bit like the egg sacs that praying mantises have, but I also wanted to play up the idea of lenses more, so that's why it's got all these eyes looking around. And lastly, and probably least importantly, I have a number of designs that I wanted to look like dice. Um, so we have a six-sided dice with Cubesque and a D20 with Behold Drake. And now we've got our 10-sided dice. Again, not important, but I think it's funny, so we're doing it. Okay, let's go ahead and meet Isidron, the lens Pokemon. Now wrapped in a protective cocoon, a number of sturdy refractive lenses allow this bug type to keep a constant eye on its surroundings. Inside, Isidron actually only has two eyes, but the way that their lenses bend the light make it appear as though they have seven. The ability is still Tinted Lens, which is fantastic and doubles damage done by not very effective moves, and the hidden ability is Compound Eyes, obviously. And it looks very happy to be observing the world from its new protective cocoon. It's sure to evolve again, but who knows what it might become. But let's go ahead and take a look at our other possible evolution, Hoaxian Dunsparce. Now this one is a little bit of a cheat, as Hoaxian Dunsparce evolves when it learns a certain move here, Twin Needle. Normally it wouldn't learn this move until level 32, but it happens to be available at Poke Centers for a pretty hefty price. 
So basically, you'll have to have gotten quite lucky and happened to have purchased it earlier. But let's see what we get. This is going to be our take on the Dunsparce. Now, I had asked for input on what evolution it should get, and the response was just completely split between something cool and something derpy. So we're going to end up doing a split evolution. And today, we're starting out derpy with the Dunsparce. It's basically getting the same multi-segment body plan of regular Dunsparce, but with the Hoaxian bug legs. Now, um, while the first stage had some intentional Caterpie references, we're going to use a bit of Butterfree for the evolution and give it some cute antenna and practically worthless little wings on its back. And uh, with all the suggestions for exciting secondary types, the Dunsparce doesn't play that way. It's actually gonna stay mono bug. I think that's funny. All right, let's go ahead and check out Hoaxian the Dunsparce, the land snake Pokemon. While the Dunsparce elsewhere have multiple sets of wings, the Hoaxian variant has a single pair. These wings aren't able to lift its hefty body off the ground, but somehow the addition of this slight lift lead to this Pokemon moving even faster with its multiple legs. How did Dunsparce wound up being as fast as it is has stumped researchers. Its ability is still speed boost, so this is definitely one of the fastest Pokemon in the Hoax region, and the hidden ability is Runaway. Now, let's be real, there's an almost zero chance that you happen to have gotten the move, you needed to evolve this beast so early, but who knows? I don't know, maybe you're the luckiest trainer ever. Anyway, uh, I just needed to slip this design in since we're doing a split Evo. And actually, you know, you know what? Let's go ahead and take a look at the decks as a whole real fast. We've got quite a few new Pokemon to start filling things out, but uh, especially after adding an Ultra Beast in the last episode near the end of the decks, we've got quite a lot of space open. Your starters are around level 13 at this point, so evolutions aren't far off, but you'll have to let me know if there are any other evolutions that you are hoping for. Now, it isn't long before you arrive at the coordinates that Lazy Susie gave you. You find a small crater of scorched earth and moss. Maybe this fiery crater will lead us to some sort of clue as to where the device component may have landed. Look, there are some tracks. Something must have picked it up and taken it this way. Something? Like something horribly ugly? Maybe. The tracks definitely lead into that cluster of trees over there. You guys ready for this? Cordelia leads you towards unknown horrors. But we'll pick up from there in the next episode. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you are enjoying this series. There is a new puzzle added to the Discord server, so check out the video description for details on how to join all the puzzly journal goodness. Now, I will catch you in the next one. Later, nerds!